Imagine you're a plant. You're chilling out in the sunlight, absorbing some carbon dioxide through the stomatal pores, absorbing some water through your roots, and you're just chilling. But then you realize you need to make food too. And how do you do that? We all know that plants make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, what happens? Carbon dioxide, water, in the presence of sunlight is used to produce glucose. That is the main source of energy. And oxygen, of course, is released as a byproduct. And then plants use this glucose to produce energy by breaking down this glucose. But if you take a look at this light reaction, which is what is actually taking place when plants are absorbing this sweet, sweet sunlight. If you take a look at that light reaction, it involves water, ADP+, NADP+, in the presence of sunlight, to yield ATP, NADPH, and oxygen. And ATP, as you all know, is the energy currency. This is what gives the plant energy, basically. And NADPH is an electron carrier. Oxygen, of course, is the byproduct. Where in this reaction is glucose? Because photosynthesis involves using carbon dioxide and water to produce glucose. Where is glucose? There is no glucose here. Only energy and NADPH are produced. Well, that's because this reaction, rightly called the light reaction, involves just the production of ATP and NADPH. Later, in a reaction known as the light independent reaction, the products of the light reaction, which are the ATP and NADPH produced, are used along with the carbon dioxide that is absorbed to produce glucose. And this process is known as carbon fixation. Fixation because whatever carbon dioxide is there in the atmosphere is fixed in the form of glucose, into the form of glucose. And that is why it is known as carbon fixation. And this is rightly termed the light independent reaction because it doesn't directly depend on light to take place. Of course, it needs the product of the light reaction, which is ATP and NADPH, right? The products of the light reaction are needed, but it doesn't need light energy directly for this process to occur. Some people also call it the dark reaction, which is a misnomer because this doesn't happen or take place during the night when it is dark, when there is no sunlight. It takes place during the day, but it just doesn't need direct sunlight like the light reaction does. So this light independent reaction is also known as the Calvin cycle in honor of the person who discovered it, Melvin Calvin. And it's a cycle because, of course, it's a cyclical process. So, the process takes place in this manner. So, in this video, we're going to learn about the Calvin cycle and how it takes place. So, let's start. And let's just focus on the first step of the Calvin cycle. Now, Calvin cycle involves one of the most important enzymes known as ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. Quite a mouthful. It is abbreviated as Rubisco. R-U for this ribulose, bis for this bisphosphate, carboxylase C for carboxylase and O for oxygenase. So this enzyme, which is coincidentally the most abundant protein on earth, is what begins the process of Calvin cycle. Now, from the name itself, you can say that it has two functions. It can catalyze the carboxylation reaction, which is addition of carbon dioxide, or the oxygenation reaction, which is the addition of oxygen. In this video, we're going to focus on just the carboxylation aspect of Rubisco. When we talk more about C4 plants in upcoming videos, we'll talk about the oxygenation function of Rubisco as well. So what Rubisco does is it carboxylates something. And what does it carboxylate? It carboxylates this 5-carbon molecule known as ribulose bisphosphate or RUBP. That's where it gets its name from, the enzyme, because the substrate it acts on is the ribulose bisphosphate. So one carbon dioxide molecule, one carbon, reacts with ribulose bisphosphate, which is a 5-carbon molecule, to give a 6-carbon intermediate. This 6-carbon intermediate is very short-lived. It's very unstable 
and it immediately breaks down into two molecules of 3-phosphoglyceric acid, otherwise abbreviated as PGA. So, six carbon splits into two and each of that has three carbons. This process where the carbon dioxide reacts with RUBP to give this 3-phosphoglyceric acid or PGA, this is known as the carboxylation phase of this cycle. This is the first phase, the carboxylation phase. And this process is catalyzed by the enzyme Rubisco. Now what happens? What happens to this 3-phosphoglyceric acid? This 3-phosphoglyceric acid is then converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And this step requires energy and NADPH. So, we learnt that in the light reaction, ATP and NADPH are produced, right? They are used up exactly here at this part of the Calvin cycle. So, the two molecules of 3-phosphoglyceric acid with the help of ATP, NLG and NADPH are converted to two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Again, this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is also a 3-carbon molecule. It is abbreviated as G3P and they are also 3-carbon molecules. So, two such 3-carbon molecules are formed. It makes sense, right? There are two 3-carbon molecules here. There are two 3-carbon molecules here. And now, this step where Phosphoglyceric acid is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate with the help of energy and N NADPH is known as the reduction phase. This is the second phase of the cycle. First is the carboxylation phase. This is the reduction phase. So then what happens to this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate? One of this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or G3P goes ahead to form glucose. The other G3P is used to regenerate this ribulose bisphosphate. And this process also requires energy. I have not mentioned it here, but it also requires ATP be used and converted to ADP. So, this process where glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is used to regenerate RUBP is known as the regeneration phase. And this is the third phase. So, there are three phases in the Calvin cycle. One is the carboxylation phase where with the help of Rubisco, carbon dioxide and ribulose bisphosphate RUBP are converted to a 6-carbon intermediate. In the next step, the 6-carbon intermediate is split into two 3-carbon molecules PGA, phosphoglyceric acid. In the next phase of the Calvin cycle, in the reduction phase, Phosphoglyceric acid is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or G3P with the help of ATP and NADPH. One of this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate goes ahead to make glucose and the other glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is used to regenerate RUBP in the regeneration phase of the Calvin cycle. That also requires the use of energy. Now, this reaction is not balanced. Because if you see here, there are three carbons, 1, 2, 3. Somehow these carbons need to make 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 carbon RUBP. How is that possible? So let's next focus on balancing this Calvin cycle reaction. So instead of just one molecule of carbon dioxide, three molecules of carbon dioxide enters the Calvin cycle. And the three molecules react with three molecules of RUBP. So three CO2 plus three RUBP. Now, you're going to get three of the six carbon intermediates, right? And they're going to split into six molecules of phosphoglyceric acid because you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 18 such three, uh, carbon molecules here. They're going to split to give six molecules of PGA. And the six molecules of PGA are going to get converted to six molecules of G3P out of which one, just one again, is going to go ahead and make glucose. But now you are left with 15 carbon atoms here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 carbon atoms here. That is used to regenerate the three molecules of RUBP. Because here also you have 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into 3, 15. So this is the entire Calvin cycle reaction where... Three molecules of carbon dioxide react with three molecules of RUBP 
to give six molecules of phosphoglyceric acid which are then converted to six molecules of g3p one then goes ahead to make glucose and the remaining five of the g3p are used to regenerate the rubp but even now if we see we are left with only one g3p molecule for the production of glucose and it has only three carbons but the chemical formula for glucose is c6h12o6 which means essentially three more carbons are required how does that happen well the calvin cycle essentially occurs six times then each time does it take three carbons no each time the calvin cycle turns one carbon dioxide molecule is fixed so by the end of six turns you will have six carbons so if you were to balance the number of atps as well so the 6 atp converting to 6 adp is for three carbons so if you were to take for one carbon dioxide you will have two atp similarly if you took a look at the nadph it is 6 nadph for three carbon molecules so for one carbon dioxide you will have two nadph here in the reduction phase in the regeneration phase three atps are used for three carbon dioxide molecules so for one carbon dioxide molecule you'll have one atp so totally for every turn of this calvin cycle three atp molecules and two nadph molecules are used so at the end of six turns where six carbon dioxide molecules are used six into three 18 ATP molecules and 6 into 2 12 NADPH molecules are totally consumed to give one molecule of glucose and that is the calvin cycle